Good, 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 good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of On the Table. My name is Jumwega, or simply Jumweka, the certified hustler. By the way, big shout out to the original certified hustler, Obi Banda. I wonder if he still makes this to my t shirt because he yeah, went all out. The right t shirt, now, Dala. But anyway, speaking of hustlers, the owner of this place is certainly a hustler. Uh, he's the owner of Zach's Corner. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Zach is his name. So he's an entrepreneur, philanthropist, nafimbi, nafimbi. And while we're waiting for him, we're just setting up. We have to come to earlier for that and make sure everything is in place before we have a chat with him. But before we get into that chat, we'll go into a conversation with Nigerian comedian Josh Tufani. By the time you're watching this, he's probably already left the country. He's probably been done like media tour, media run. He's gone this side and gone that side. But you know what comes out of on the table is different from anywhere else. Don't ask me how I know that. But here's what you can look out for on today's show. For now, I've not seen like really good collaborations, you understand? And that's one of the things I want to introduce. So you feel like Zambians are not working together enough? Yes. So you're just using Zambians to build your audience online and, mm. and all of that? I already had my Zambian fans before I met my wife. It's just funny, she's half Zambian or half Indian. Some people don't find no, you of, funny, of, do you know that? Okay. Um, So hey Josh, I know you've been getting this a lot, but uh, welcome to Zambia again. Yeah, Mulibuanji, my brother. Yeah, Tribuno Mulibuanji. Yeah, uh, very, very Bruno. <laughs> very well. well. You, yeah, yeah, you're heading somewhere. I, I love, I love how you're, you know, learning it and and. Uh, but I, but I believe also, are you learning Bemba as well? Yeah, yeah, I'm more interested in Bem, Bemba than Nyanja. Mm. Yeah. But you, you do know Muribanji is, is, is Nyanja? Yeah, I know, I know. I, I know some other Bembas. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What, what, do you, what do you know in Bemba? Uh, uh, the Bemba, the one I know now, Bemba. <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> but be honest, um, yeah. is Zambia starting to feel like your, your second home? Because people always say that, oh, this is my second home. Go to Malawi. Yeah, this is my second home. Go to S this is my second home. How how do you really feel about that? From, from the first time I stepped my foot mm. in Zambia, it was like second. It was like home. So you know, you know, home is a person. Home is the people there. Yeah. Home is not the, actually the location. You understand. Mm. So when I step and I see meet my in laws, I meet yeah. my I meet people like Abel Chungo, mm. my friend. You know. A lot of people, they make it just feel like home. They make everything beautiful for me. They make Zambia home for me. So, yeah, man. Mm. It is home. Yeah. It's not even like a second home. It's home. Nigeria is home. This place is home. There's yeah. no first and second. They're all homes. Ah, nice. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a good save. Yeah. I see what you've done there. But uh, what, what do you like about Zambia the most? What, what do you appreciate the most about here? Okay. Um, it's a very good option. <laughs> like... Already, Nigeria mm. is the hustle place, you yeah. know, the, you know, but once you come into Zambia, you, everywhere is calm, it calms you down, you understand? So yeah. It's like a safe space, it's like, you know, a, a relaxation place, it's yeah. a place to relax, and yeah, man, just breathe, yeah. Dope, dope. I, I know that uh, you are here for the Laugh and Learn Masterclass, yeah, which should be... Yeah happening yeah. at the University of Zambia. By the time this is airing, I think this would have already taken place. But, yeah. but what, what made you even come up with the whole idea that, you know what, let me go to Zambia, let me go again, I have a master class, interact with people, meet and greet. What made you come up with the idea? Okay, yeah, so I have, I have a foundation mm. called the African Graffiti. And last year, I was in Rwanda for the same master class. Mm. And it's just my way of giving back, you know, um, the way I look at Africa, I feel like there's a lot that can come out from Africa, and yeah. you know we're not we're not making use of all the uh, human resources that we have, the talent that we have. Like Africa is so talented mm. because of our struggles, and it comes from a real place. You understand? And I feel like I'm from a country that, in quote, has woken up to, you know. Entertainment, yeah, across the world, across uh, the globe. Yes, yeah. you understand, and I feel like every African country can also wake up. And the little way I can, you know, impact 
knowledge, you know, the little I have. Uh, mm. just, yeah, and that's how I came up with the foundation, you know, to help young people and see how many people can, you know, like David would say, we rise by lifting others. Yeah, yeah. How many yeah. people we can lift, yeah. But what, what do you think has made Nigeria stand out? Because others would say, I mean, you do have... You do have the Nigerian privilege, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. That, that's, that is a thing now. Nigerian yeah, privilege. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably. I mean, you have Nigerians in a lot of countries yeah. out there, and you guys okay, are very yeah. aggressive with 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 how you push. I mean, even you being here, yeah. You you've met your Nigerian people, and yeah, it's sure. easier to navigate around. Yeah. Okay. First of all, one of the reasons I'm doing this is to change the narrative from aggression, mm. aggressive. Mm. You understand? Yeah. To but it's in a good way when people say aggressive. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, yeah, you understand, but yeah. trust me, um, I can tell you at least 60% of people don't say <laughs> aggressive well, in a good well. way, you understand? Mm, mm, yeah, the, you. the people easily see Nigerians as very aggressive, and when you say aggressive, you know what I mean. Come like on. in the literal sense, like yeah, physical. Yeah, yeah you understand, so... Yeah. But, but wait, is, isn't that true too? It is not for me, no, it's, 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 that's not true. I'm a Nigerian, I'm a real Nigerian. My both parents are Nigeria, mm. Nigerians, and I've lived in Lagos. I grew up in Lagos. Yeah. So, but, um, but I, do, you I, also, do you also get people t telling you that Nigerians that are arrogant? Arrogant? Yeah. Yes, it is a stereotype, but it's not what you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's not arrogance. It is just who we are. We are loud. It's very funny, I had a conversation because with Neptune, and, and, and he... He's said he's also heard the same thing, so meaning people are saying it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's what people think. People think we're arrogant. Mm. We're just loud. There are so many people in Nigeria. So before you get hurt, you have to really speak loud. Mm. <laughs> you understand? So um, Nigeria is not a place where, <laughs> see, there's a competition for everybody. Yeah. You can't afford to do less. You understand? Mm. Mm. And because of that, everybody has to just be on their toes. You understand? On the positive side, nobody fights. You know, where it's not, it's not about fight. It's not unhealthy competition. You understand? Mm. It is very healthy. Trust me. So the Nigerian spirit is the one that wants to just be heard anywhere. Mm. Because that's how the society is in Nigeria. Yeah. Everybody's talking. You have to be heard. But but even uh, and we appreciate you wanting to teach more people around content creation and yeah. all of that and people to improve in that regard. But even if people do that in, in other countries, what are the possibilities to really make it uh, at the same level at which Nigerians are doing it? At people like yourself, mm. what are the possibilities? Yeah, it's it's very possible because Nigeria started from somewhere. You understand? Mm. Um, I remember, in, in fact, like about eight years ago, there was nothing like content create creation mm. or, or whatsoever like there's nothing like um online comedians coming online making skits yeah, sketches yeah. there was nothing like that there was it was not a thing people do it but it was not like it was there was no industry for it it was not already like an industry you understand mm. i came at a time where there in nigeria back then there was like less than five people that were doing online comedy you understand mm. so and you know, one, one thing Nigeria, Nigerians leverage on is people. We, we have ourselves. That's mm -hmm. all we have, you know. Like we don't that. have government that do things for us. We don't have, like, you know, the government that give money and all those, throw money around and, you know, and uh, fund industries like entertainment. You know, our, our government don't do that. So oh, really? I we do it for ourselves. I, I think a lot of people don't know that. People think that you have, uh, like, government backing and support. Man, everything that Nigerians, every Nigeria that has come up, came up by themselves. We hustle through everything. As I decided one day, okay, I'm going to be making videos. I got a small phone. I mm -hmm. got more money. I, I upgraded, kept upgrading, kept, you know, going, pushing mm. re relentlessly. And that's how I got here. Nobody did anything. Nobody gave anything to anybody. It's just people like older comedians, the older generation of comedians in mm, Nigeria mm. that one time say, okay, oh, let me mentor you. And those mentorships are what help the industry grow in Nigeria. Just not really official mentorships. Like, oh, this guy is doing well. Let me pick him up and just see what I can do for him. Like, I see... I see um, Abel Chungu doing that with in in the way what's his name Ima 
Ndineima. Ndineima, yeah. yeah. I see, I see him doing that, and that's how Nigeria, that's how Nigeria works. Mm. That's how the industry is growing. You see this artist he picks up a small, a younger artist is you know putting him through you know giving him small gigs and stuff, and that's how the industry grew. That's how oh. the industry became what it is. You know, yeah. Yeah, and, and big ups. By the way, Abel is somewhere around here. So, I mean, I think the comedians in Zambia, the younger ones are doing very well in supporting yeah. one another. Yeah. Uh, even though, I mean, others argue, uh, argue about that. But I've noticed, I've noticed something also. You're, you're very deliberate with who you are connected to here. Uh, obviously, there's Abel. I know you've also been in touch with Ndine Ma, yeah. Chichi Daisy. So, yeah. you have, you've really been following what, what has been going on in, in, in Zambia. I won't really say I've been following. Mm. <laughs> mm. I just have friends, you understand? Okay. And yeah, of course, Abel is one of my very good friends. Yeah. And, you know, and of course, Ima. Yeah. He, he is my friend too. And yeah, um, you know, when you go back to, when you go back home, there's a whole lot going on at home. Yeah. You know, <laughs> before you can follow up another person. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Quite difficult, yeah. Uh, I come? But but from what you've no, what have you noticed about the content creators you've come across so far? Okay, um, for the few I have seen, I just see them pushing on their own, you know. Mm. Yeah, for now I've not seen like really good collaborations. You understand? And that's one of the things I want to introduce in Zambia. In Zambia, collaborations and as a content creator, collaborate. You cannot. You cannot overemphasize collaborations because mm. you need it so much as it's so important to the career, to your career and work. So you feel like Zambians are not working together enough? Yes. I feel like there's a whole lot that we can do to make people collaborate. And there's a whole lot that can be achieved when, you know, when comedians, artists, entertainers as a whole just collaborate, you know. In Nigeria, we collaborate with Everybody, everybody collaborates with everybody. You see a cook collaborating with a comedian to do it, make a video. You see an artist is doing something with a dancer. It's, you know, different things like we just find a way to make everything look nice, make it make sense, you understand? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes it's not, even, it's not even about having the big industry. Yeah. The industry can make the industry look like an industry mm. when people collaborate like you know the guy with with five million following yeah. is collaborating with somebody that has hundred thousand with that you have lifted this guy this guy feels it has become a star automatically you understand mm -hmm. yeah and you know on everybody like that everybody's gonna look big nice nice okay so um but speaking of collaborations are you Collaborating with anybody here uh, in Zambia? Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, Ima, Ima and I are going to do something very, very, you know, very soon okay. that you will see. And of course, Abel and I, as we have a lot, a lot that I would not like to give out the surprise. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a, a whole lot coming. Up. In fact, we recorded the song <laughs> in two years ago. We recorded the song. We've been trying to shoot the video, but. I had, to, I had to do some medical stuff when I came the mm, last time. Mm. And so we couldn't shoot the video and do all, all of the stuff we wanted to do. But then, man, you will be seeing a lot of collaborations with me and um, Zambian creatives a lot. Yeah. yeah and, and even the, the music side, I mean, people might see you as the uh, more of like a comedian. But do you, do you really consider taking up the music side, like seriously, seriously? I've always loved music. And, yeah. you know, believe me, since this year started, I've been more in the studio. Mm. I just set up my, you know, my studio and I've been more in the studio. And there is a whole lot coming. I have features from all around the globe, you know, already. Yeah. And there are some unreleased stuff that by the time we start releasing, people will take the music more seriously. Yeah. As serious as I take it, yeah, because... Yeah, and I wonder how that works, because, you know, especially with the uh, comedic side of you, yeah, like people taking you or music seriously, uh, do you see that being a, a challenge and hurdle for you? So, so that is why, that is why I didn't take music seriously since, because I felt like I hadn't come to that time of my career where I can just, you know, introduce something new to them, something mm. different, something, you know, utterly different from what I used to do. Yeah. And 
but just now I feel that okay, I've come to that you know place in my career where mm. I can boldly say, hey guys, I want to give you guys music. Listen, whether you like it or not, take it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I um, I know it's gonna take a lot of you know statement making and you know yeah and. Trust me, I'm I'm doing my best to put those things in place and you know, change some narrative here and there and make them see me like somebody that can drop an actual music because music is my first love. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a producer, always be a producer, a music producer. So dope, yeah. dope, dope. So I I know you've got fans all across the world, uh, but in terms of people who consume your content, what's what's your hierarchy like? What's your what's your top five? Top five. Yeah. First, India. I love India. Mm. <laughs> Second, USA. Then third, Nigeria, of course, my home com country. And then the UK, Zambia. And, yeah. So you, you put Zambia at somewhere number five? Yeah. And how does that make you feel also? I mean, you have India and USA who consume your content more than your own people in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, so... But I get know, it. For Nigerians, it could be also Nigerians in yeah, India so, uh, so, and in USA. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, you know, India has a large population. Yeah. India, you cannot undeniably like they have population. So I'm not shocked, you understand? Mm. Um, and I do s s love Indian content, you understand? Yeah. I love their culture. Also, I love cultures, actually. I, yeah. I do things with a lot of culture, you understand? Mm. I'm doing some... I, I, I used to do a skit back... Back then, I did a skit in Swahili mm. when people had people didn't even believe, like, guy, <laughs> why you do this? But I found some Tanzanian and Kenyan fans, and I'm like, oh, okay, let me do this for them. Yeah. And when I started seeing Zambians, I did some, some things in Bemba, I spoke some Bemba yeah. on, in my skit, and yeah. So, Indians, I did that, and Indians picked it up, they are lovers, they are believers. When they love you, they go all out. Yeah. And yeah, but the USA, I know and there's a whole lot of Nigerians in the USA. Yeah. Yeah. So for now, based on what I see on one of my platforms, uh, that's just my YouTube I'm talking about, mm -hmm. is a whole different vibe on Facebook. Nigeria is number one on Facebook, you understand? Mm -hmm. And India and um, Zambia can like be second on Facebook because I have a lot of Zambians on Facebook, so... At what point did you realize that Zambians are really consuming your content? At what point did it get to you like, okay, I think I need to pay more attention here? I, I think it was like, it was like some four or five years ago. Mm. Yeah, I just checked my Facebook one day and I think I asked people to put their flags ah. yeah, in the comment section and I see Zambia, 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 Zambia. What? From where? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think algorithm just pushed me to Zambia. I mean, uh, so I don't know. And I'm like, no, 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 no. These people, the love is massive. And, and at what point now did your wife come in the, in the picture? Because you've, you've got a Zambian wife. Yeah. How, how did that happen? So the, the, the funny thing is that I already had my Zambian fans before I met my wife. Mm. So it's just funny. She's half Zambian half Indian. Now I'm having Zambians and Indian <laughs> following me. I don't know. Way, way before I met my wife. I don't know. I don't know. It's just divine. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful because already these people love me and now it is more love when they realize I'm married to a Zambian. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, if, even 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 as you were, how did you meet actually? Let's maybe let's start from there. How did you meet? We met in a beautiful scenery. <laughs> yeah, I know you get this question probably a lot, but but for those who've never really known the, the, the true story behind that. Um, okay, you see that story. I don't want to share it yet. I want to share it when <laughs> on our fiftieth year anniversary. I love how ambitious <laughs> you are. <laughs> and it's how many years now? How, how many years so far? Um, not too well, well, four or five years. Yeah, four or five, five years. Five. Yeah, five years. And uh, we've got one, two kids now? Two. Two, yeah, two, 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 yeah. two. Yeah. How's fatherhood going? It is what it is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how jet lag I am. <laughs> 
So when, when you came here, you actually came with her here? Uh, no, no, so um, my son was giving birth to in Zambia. Ah, okay. In January. My ah, second son. Ah, okay. Yeah. So he's here. Yeah, he's they here. They are so, here. Okay. So my family sense. has been here uh, since January, and I just came to take them home. Uh -huh. I cannot come, and Zambia will not feel me, and that's why I'm doing the master class at least to make you know, give back to the Zambian people, you know, the love mm, that mm. I've received. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, even as you do this and people see you having this master class and so on, people might have their own thoughts mm. and, and, you know, say different things, say things like, you know, so you're just using Zambians to build your audience online and, and, mm. and all of that. Um, how How then do you also make people understand that this is genuinely from your heart and you really want to do this for the people out there? Well, well, I don't think anybody can, should see it that way. I don't think anybody will see it that way because I have a huge market in Nigeria. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have all the audience. I, you know, so many people in Nigeria have Indians, I have from all over the world. So, I mean, coming to Zambia, you know, even though, yes, it's because of the love I have been shown, mm. you understand, and two is just to give back. Yeah. Yeah. It shows in every in in everything, you know. First of all, my ticket for the master class is just one fifty. And the reason I put a ticket is because normally when I go to other African countries to do my master class, you know, I just go do strict master class, no jokes, nothing. But I want also to add like some comedy on the side and and meet and greet, you understand? I want everybody, I want to just draw closer to the Zambian people, you understand? Mm. And so to control the crowd and everything, we need to put that gate fee, you understand? Yeah. So if not, without that, if it's just, just the master class, come on, I'll do it for free. Anything okay. to give back. Nice, nice. Yeah. And of course, there's going to be different opinions, and you've probably seen this over the years. You've, yeah. you've been doing this for some time. You're going to have people who absolutely love you and, and, and want to see more of you. Yeah. Then there'll be others who, who, who won't. I mean, some people don't find no, you of, funny. Of, Do you know that? A, a lot, man. It's, it's, it's normal, man. Mm. Even Jesus Christ, God hates us. <laughs> who am I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's welcome. Yeah. yeah. But how, how do you comedians also deal with that kind of um, mentality okay. from some people? Okay, for me, mm. I've been able to create a lot of characters, you know. I, I'll give you options. I've given, I've given my audience options. So if you don't like Mama Felicia, you will love Juga. Mm. If you don't like Juga, you will definitely like one of the characters from the audition. Because they are mm. over, mm. I've played over 50 characters on the audition. So mm. I've given, you know, because I've seen DMs. I've seen messages like, bro, man, I don't used to like you before, but you see this one? Yeah. No, 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 bro. For now, I'm a fan. You understand? Fans turn to, uh, haters turn to fans. Yes. So, I mean, that's just the energy. Mm. Yeah. So, it's so, welcome. One day you believe. Uh, as we conclude, what, what would you say are some of the common challenges that a lot of content creators will face uh, on their come up, on, on their rise to uh, even international acclaim? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, is is just the African struggle, you know. When you start, you might not have like um, capital, yeah. Know? Capital in the sense that you might not be able to buy the best cameras, the best equipment, mm -hmm. you know. There's some people that want to start up like podcasts like this. Yeah, they can't even buy this this one. Mm -hmm. This mic and you know everything you need. You might not be able to afford them. Even to rent, you might not be able to rent. Mm -hmm might not be able to afford all those things. And it's a big challenge. I faced it when I was coming up, but then I didn't stop. Just learn how to start small, you know. Appreciate the little beginnings, you know. Get yourself a small phone, start pushing. If you are really talented, it's, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. The world will accept you, yeah. That's, what, that's my belief. When did you first make your, your biggest bag? Not even made a big bag yet. <laughs> really? Or oh, is this you being modest? <laughs> it's, it's, it's because of what I'm expecting. I don't know, man. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> so it's, the money has not been what you've been expecting. Yeah, man. I'm trying to make two billion dollars, and 
Mm. <laughs> okay, I yeah, know that's, okay. that's, that's, that's so. But that's, I have to give props to one person, yeah, in my career. One time, Kenny Black, yeah, is my friend. Huh. He's when I gave my first hundred thousand naira. That's like that's like hundred dollars, yeah. Mm. So he, he sent me to a do a job uh, at that time. I, I, I was even charging a hundred <laughs> hundred dollars. Mm. It's like, bro. I'm gonna make this people pay you hundred thousand. Like I'm like, what? And they send the money to my account, and my bank blocked my account because that money was too much for the kind of account I had. Wow, had wow. like a student account. <laughs> <laughs> How are you having all this money in here? <laughs> like, bro, you need to explain this money. <laughs> Explaining the hundred dollars. <laughs> I went explaining, bro, man, with evidence. Wait, you actually had to do this? Yeah. Because now I don't even know if you're like, if you're no, for real, for, for real. real. I'm, 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 I'm dead serious. Yeah. So I always, I, I want to say this so many times so that Kenny Black will see it. I know that it's real. I tell him every time, but he mm. didn't know that that money blocked my account. <laughs> really? Yeah. I had like, um, a, a student account that could take only fifty thousand naira mm. at that time. Okay. Okay. To tell you what I was earning. And what? And what? What year was this? Just like. In 2016, mm. yeah, 2016. Okay, that was like my first year of blowing up. You understand? Yeah, I was getting all the fame, but the money was not yet coming. You understand? Okay, so so far, what, what would you say has been your biggest bag? What's what's the? Oh, man, this money is keep coming. <laughs> but but would you say it's it's something that's really sustainable and? You don't need to have other hustles going on. Yeah, man. Yeah. Even though, even though, so the reason the bag is sustainable now is mm. because we already have other hustles, other streams, you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I started making money, of course, man, I have other streams where money come from, you know. I'm doing some real estate on the side and stuff, you know. Mm. And the pain. So it, you don't really expect... You're not under pressure, you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so, everything that, anything that comes in, they come in bulk, you know, they keep coming from different angles. Yeah, know? yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so I can't really pick one money, I say. And, and obviously, and your in laws understand what you do and, and everything that you have going on. Do they yeah, understand man. this content creator side of you? Yeah, man, they, and they, they're very cool, yes, yes, they understand it, you know, over the years. Mm. They've been very understanding and well, I'm not. I'm not really the notorious celebrity, so it's. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. very humble and. I, I think I should ask some of my teammates. Like, what scandals does uh, <laughs> does Josh Tupony have? I think uh, they would have told me. They would have told me, but yeah, I think yeah. you've got a clean, uh, pretty clean record. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't have too many things to explain to them. They already know. That. Okay. Yeah. Now it makes sense why you're friends with Abel because you've got a you've got a very clean. Uh, yeah, you know. Very clean slate. But hey, uh, Josh, thanks a lot for Bad joining us. Bad boy with clean slate. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, thanks a lot for, for joining us. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. Looking for, I know you're going to be back soon. You'll definitely be back. Of course. So we, we look forward to that. And uh, yeah. we hope that people will be able to learn from, from the masterclass. Yeah, sure. I hope, I hope, I hope so. I hope I, I touch lives. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Josh Tufani has been uh, my first guest today on, on the table. Still have more coming up after the break. And... Here's what to look out for. As a man, why don't you be behaving like a woman? It's in the I don't domain. want to talk about this situation. I don't want to talk about it. Well, what, are, what are you running away from? You also want to reduce yourself to a level of the people who are putting me in a dress and whatnot. I have, I have wasted at least 40 minutes of my time accommodating you talking about this thing. Welcome back. Thank you for staying tuned to On The Table. So right before the break, had a chat with a Nigerian comedian in Josh Too Funny. But uh, we're still out here at Zach's Corner. And by the way, Ish, I'm, in, I'm enjoying this mocktail here. I think it's going to be done before this interview is done. So I might need another one because we are going to have a very interesting chat with my guest, who is the proprietor of this place. So that means he is an entrepreneur. He's also a philanthropist and a social media personality. 
allow me to welcome the one and only Zach. Drum roll. Brrr. <laughs> we'll add effects you. or something there. How are you doing, man? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us here. Oh, My first welcome. time here. Um, <laughs> almost got lost, but uh, it's good mm -hmm. to finally see the place here. Yeah, it's very, it's very easy to locate. I think yeah. we just need to put a more visible uh, poster at the, at the roadside. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I think our poster is social media, but then yeah, <laughs> yeah, people really need to to find it easy to to locate it. But speaking of this of this of this uh, food business, I know you've yeah. been in it for for some time now. Um, and I know that part of all of this was influenced by your mother, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but what made you what made you also continue with the passion on, uh, above the influence from your mother? Uh, so, I mean, the passion around it is I had to go back and see uh, what helped me at the point because mm. I was I was working somewhere before um, I stopped working. That, that's a long time ago. I stopped uh, working as a network engineer. Was it? Yes, yes. yes. Mm. Uh, as, as a network engineer. So I I I mean I. I had to stop work uh, because of certain reasons. And, you know, uh, my elder brother gave me a vehicle, um, Land Rover Discovery. What was that? Land Rover Discovery 2? It was quite big. Really? It had a very You've big engine. you a very a kind V8. brother. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a V8. So... Um, I said, you know what, instead of me staying home and doing nothing, um, let me try and um, do up something. So mm. I thought about it. What is it that I like doing? I love eating <laughs> and I love being in the kitchen yeah. uh, with mom, learning a few things. So I, I told mom, you know, I think uh, let me use this vehicle to be able to do food deliveries for companies. So I would take food in different locations for, yeah, for people to be able to, to, to buy. So uh, I had registered it. Uh, then it was Zach's Kitchen when I yeah. did it. Then I got another opportunity to start working, so I started working again. I got back into the corporate world. Then I, I had to abandon it for, for, for some time. So after, 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 after years, and I feel like, you know what, I, I, I don't really need to be working now, you know. Uh, I said, let, let me go back to my passion, and that's when we came up with Zach's Corner. And so how long did you how long did you work in the corporate world um, together? Close to eight years. Eight years. Yeah, so, so I took an eight year break. You you worked for eight years and took an eight year break. You know, I mean, I took an I, I from Zach's from from Zach's corner. I took an eight year break. Oh, I was okay, okay, too. That, okay, so okay. I see, I see. But so what does what does the network engineer really do? <laughs> Basically, it's networks. Um, set up. Plans. Sounds like IT. Yeah, it's IT. It's IT. It's IT. So, ah, okay. Uh, so it's like a cooler, fancier way of saying. Yeah, an IT, IT specialist. specialist. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a cameraman, I'm a photographer. Yes. Huh? He's not a cameraman, he's a videographer. The guys behind the cameras are videographers. They're DOPs, directors. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, yeah. so, um, I won't lie, I, some people do not know this, but mm -hmm. I've also tried the, the food business mm -hmm. with, with my family as well, my brothers. Okay. Um, Hey, I won't lie, we've struggled with the food business. And, and mm. what made it worse for us, it was a cafe. So it was yeah. food and bar. And oh, yeah. the bar was sustaining pretty much the whole business. And, yeah. you know, food, it's a very hectic business. I'm sure you can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. How have you managed to navigate that? Because it's, it's, it's not an easy business to have. Yeah, so um, I think one of my strengths, uh, even when I was uh, working as an IT specialist, mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would do both marketing and uh, actual implementation of, uh, of solutions. So... Um, I, I, b before getting back into it, I had to put up certain strategies for me to be able to be sustainable f uh, both well for a long time. So what, I, wh what really sustains me is the promos and also due to the fact that I have a little bit of social media numbers, yeah, yeah. it's very easy for me to get... Um, Partnership. So, like now, we are, we're in partnership with Fruta. Fruta gives us drinks. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, noticed Fruta that, yeah. gives us drinks. So, uh, what we basically do is we add it to what we are um, selling. So, mm -hmm. it's some sort of a way that uh, they are benefiting because, of course, the Fruta name is going forward. Yeah. And also on our menu, we are able to offer something free. So, uh, basically, it's I think it's just about strategy. Uh, each of uh, I, I was telling somebody the other day, like, uh, do you know that I have ideas that, that can actually sustain Zach's Corner up to 2027? Different type of promotions, different types, different types of promotions. So I launched two, 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 two promotions last week. One which is pay uh, eat now and pay later. That's for the corporates. Mm. Uh, you know, I think a lot of a lot of corporates struggle with the fact that they have to uh, go out for lunch and some 
being a network engineer myself, being an IT specialist. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> network engineer. Sometimes we, we need to work late, knock off maybe after midnight yeah, or yeah. maybe about 23, uh, you know, 21. It, it was a bit difficult to find food. Uh, in the basis that the only places that you're going to find food mainly would be maybe deponias, you know mm, what I mean? Mm. But now Zach's Corner is able to prepare a meal. Uh, but now, for now, we're closing at 23, but we're getting back to do our 24-7. Uh, I think for... I thought of, I thought of a way to say you should be able to find your food at any time. You can find your shima yeah. at any time of the Especially day. Especially the, the, the drunkards at uh, zero one and zero two. Uh, shall we not exclude ourselves? <laughs> we, <laughs> we the. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, that's that, that's one of the things that I I put across. So there's the pay now, the eat now, pay later. Then also one of the other things that I've done is to do to deal with kids yeah um, I, I've noticed a lot of uh, including including in, in my home my daughter mm. it's a bit of a struggle to start preparing meals in the morning you have to prepare them for school and whatnot so we mm. said we could do a package which is very affordable mm. where you, you can easily order and say okay can you drop this at my child's school this is the class uh, this is the this is the class number and uh, that's her name that's his name and yeah. you drop the food there and also that customers have got an option to pay now uh, to eat to, to to get the food now and pay later. pay later or if they want they can pay in advance and we handle the courier and and everything nice yeah. I, I didn't know you've got a daughter yeah i've got two children i've got two really? children i've got a daughter and um a son a son how, how old is your daughter my daughter is the yeah. father <laughs> my daughter is eight um okay. my daughter is eight my son uh how old is my son my son is turning four Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, and you live with your kids? Yes. You're married? Yes, I live with my family. Really? Yes. I thought do not know that. Yeah, um, my wife is a very private woman. Mm. Uh, she's a lawyer, and she tries by all means to keep herself off social media. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah. I, w- I really wish I could post her more often. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could post her more often, but she's just not the social media person. You know? yeah, I see, you know, I she, see. She just doesn't like... You, she, she's one of those people who can have a profile picture on her WhatsApp for like four years. <laughs> that's me either way. I'm in the public eye, but that's me as well. Yeah, I have so a profile picture for like 10 years, yeah. really. Um, mm. you know, we'll, we'll get to really how she feels about mm. things that happen on social media. But do you remember the first time we met? Remind me. Um, it was at the thing... It was, oh, what, from what I remember, it was at the night market. Mm-hmm. And then um, I remember you 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 were telling me about mm-hmm. an organization that you run. Oh, and yeah, I think yeah. you were talking about yeah. Help Beyond Borders. Yes. And you were telling me about some brain surgery, and we yeah. exchanged numbers. I think at that particular yeah. time. But that was okay. the first time we met. That wasn't the first time. Yeah. Met no, several times time. before that, that but I'm not gonna say where. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peace. So. Peace. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a survivor of a neurosurgical condition. It's called the subdural hematoma. I had brain surgery in 2021. Okay. Uh, Subdural hematoma is a condition where you have the presence of blood and fluid floating on your brain. So it causes a lot of pressure on your, on your brain. Yeah. Actually, on my hospital bed, I remember being with one of my, my, one of my good friends, Robert. I'm telling you, Robert, if God saves my life, I think uh, the way we've been, you know, chilling and whatnot, this needs, to come at, this, this needs to come to an end. We need to maybe direct the little monies that we make into proper, proper use. That's how I had. I struggled actually for like two weeks to mm-hmm. think of how I'm going to uh, be of help, and that's when I had to go back to Doctor Caesar when I went for my review. Um, I talked to the, sorry Doctor Baby. I told Doctor Baby like I, I want to see how I can help out. Uh, I didn't know about this situation. I didn't even know such situations happen. So how can I be of help to to your department? So he told me, no, we've got children that have a condition. It's called hydrocephalus and spina bifida. Um, we we usually lack shunt. So a shunt is an uh, is a vein which is embedded in the brain that takes the fluid into the water. So they do those operations. They do quite a number of those operations. So the shunts usually run out. So I said, okay. So how how do I come in? So he took me to our house of our our care house of hope, which is right opposite uh, UTH. It's a place where people uh, people with hydrocephalus hydrocephalus mothers who stay from far. Mm-hmm. They put them there as they wait for their surgeries and wait for the reviews. So I, when we went there, I found there were like four children who needed operations and there were no chance at that point. Mm-hmm. And each chance cost about 1,700 kwacha. 
that's where my passion ignited because I was like, I have the money, so why don't I do this? And I called a few friends. I called a few corporate friends, uh, friends in the corporate world. I told them, guys, there's this situation. I explained the situation to them. They came in and we bought chance. All the four children that were operated on, the operation was what? Successful. And this is why I said, you know what? I think I need to open something that is going to help me spearhead uh, the voice for the children living with hydrocephalus and spina bifida. And that's how Help Beyond Borders came across. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Uh, it's pretty amazing the work you're doing for the, mm -hmm. the kids and, and obviously helping them out. The young, definitely people out there, yeah. uh, they, they, they need it. And yeah. it's amazing that you thought of such an initiative, really. Yeah. And uh, I think you must be commended for that. Well yeah. done. I, th I think since we started, we've helped over 3,000 children. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. That's, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. And also, you've got this place here. Mm. Obviously, uh, also, uh, you're employing other people. So that, that, that is also another contribution. Mm. Uh, have you noticed, you've got, you've got part of your strategy with some burgers here. You've got yeah. the uh, Chanda Bryan burger. Yeah. You've got the Magnet burger. Yeah. You seem to have a very good relationship with Magnet. Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, Magnet. <laughs> the relationship with Magnet. I think we're just alike people. Um, alike in the sense that um, opposite attract magnet is the violence one mm, <laughs> and I'm mm. not so we there's just a way that we complement each other we do quite a lot of things together mm. I think some some weeks ago magnet announced on his page that we will be launching something together that is going to help a lot of young people mm. but um, of course we met through social media with magnet okay. we met through social media and yeah we've been friends since then we've We've been friends. We've, we've, we've shared low moments, high moments together. He's, he's an amazing personality. It's interesting because uh, in as much as you and Magnet are friends, you and Magnet have a similar story. Mm -hmm. You were close with Muzukanji, now you're close with Kidist. Has that influenced the type of friendship you have? No. Um, actually, um, it hasn't um, in the sense that uh, I think we do not involve others in our friendship. Of course, we've got each other's backing mm, in certain mm. situations, uh, but none of those situations have. I think our friendship was strong even before all of this, uh, you know, all of this drama that has been happening. It's, it's, it, 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 it has been. Mm. Yeah. Um, now, even just Kiris herself, mm -hmm. people have also noticed your your close relationship with her. I mean, others mm. even see you as her, mm. her troller boy. So. How does it feel being the chola boy for your mom's wife? Um, well, I'm not a chola boy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's a chola boy first? What you, I mean, a chola you carry boy? her bags, you, <laughs> you escort everywhere she goes. You're the one who who does all those. You, if she, if her shoes get dusty, you are the one who. Um, I would, I would, I would want I would want to uh, ask somebody to produce some evidence to say I have actually carried Kiddis' back <laughs> <laughs> and all of that they look at. But it's so just generally seen as a, as a right-hand man anyway. Um, I mean, you know, social media, what I've realized about social media is that um, there are different people. Uh, there are different people on social media and I think the bad, the, bad, the, the bad side of people sells more than the good side of people. So uh, I feel it's just some silly person that came up with this Chola Boy thing and mm. said what not. Kiddis and Yomaps respect me a lot. They respect me a lot, uh, not only because, uh, I mean, Kidist has maybe looked up to me as, as a brother for the longest time, but uh, I think even the things that I do, the things that I do, the, 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 establ the establishments that I have, they have so much respect for me. So I'm not a chola boy. I don't fit to be a chola boy. I think <laughs> half of the people that tell me chola boy, they come to my inbox and ask for jobs. So who's the chola boy? <laughs> oh. I mean, and you know, now, now, because you also mentioned this, this, uh, you've, you've got a wife. Some people may have not known that. Others yeah. may have. Mm -hmm. um, and others will be thinking, so, mm -hmm. even with how, how close you are with, with Kiddist and you have your, mm -hmm. your wife, mm -hmm. probably a question will be coming up now is, how does your wife feel about you being Kiddist's troller boy? Um, so, I think, I think people have this wrong perception about my closeness with, uh, with, uh, with Kiddist. Uh, Many times I'm with Kidist, uh, Maps is there. I mean, but there was that time when Maps traveled, even. Yes, so the time that Maps. And others were asking questions. What, oh, yeah. what, what were you guys up to while yeah, your so, Maps was away? So, so Kidist had an appearance at the keg, and um, 
uh, you know, I think one of the closest people to, 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 to the family at the moment could be me and maybe a few others who are maybe not socialites. So uh, I was even having a chat with Maps to say, oh, she's having an appearance. Maybe I should go and beef up support and mm, whatnot. Mm, so Maps was mm. very cool with it. He gave me the blessing. And even when Kidis's phone went low, Maps and Kidis were actually chatting on my phone. Uh -oh. I gave Kiddis my phone, chatting on my phone. Kiddis was checking up. How is it going? Are you ready for your next event? That's the type of kid. That's, that's the type of personality Kiddis is. She's she's very mm. caring and very uh, keen to detail. So they were chatting on my phone. You know, checking up. Where are you? How is it going? How is it that side? So initially, when we went for that appearance, when we went for the appearance for Keg, your maps' young sister was with us. Mm. There was another friend of ours, Boston, who is very close to your maps, and then also Kitty's his friend. So it's just that me and her, we're on the limelight, and we take a picture, we're doing a dance together, it went viral and whatnot. So Kitty actually has um, uh, a relationship with my, with my wife. So mm. all of those allegations, they didn't really matter. At some point, I got broken. It, it phased me out. And guess who, caused, who called me? Because he noticed that ah, this guy is going down the drain. Mm. Maps called. Bro, I've seen what's going on. You don't need to worry about that. That attack that is happening, it's got nothing to do with you or kiddies. People just don't want me to perform properly where I am. So be calm. We've seen these allegations happen before. It has happened to me. Now it's happening to my wife. Be calm. I know the friendship that you and my wife have. Um, don't worry about it. So, so, so Maps actually even called you all the way from yeah, the yeah. UK, where yeah, it was. Yeah. Was it in the UK or Australia? Uh, where UK? were they? They were, they were in the UK. UK, okay, yeah. Ah, no, ex Australia. Yeah, but in the list. No, Australia is a recent one. So it was the UK. UK, UK. It was okay. the UK one, yeah. The, ah, UK the, 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 the food, food is even here. here. Nice. <laughs> Saved by the cameraman. Wow. <laughs> The director of what? Oh, DOP. <laughs> uh, I've got so many names. You know, even, even, even the same way you're eating the food is the same way others think you've been eating. <laughs> um, um, but, 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 <laughs> but, mm -hmm. how does your wife feel about everything that goes on on, on, on social media? Mm. My wife does get affected, but she knows me better than anyone else. That's all I can say. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she does know me better than anyone else. Chimweka, somebody who put me in a dress, she knows I'm a man. <laughs> mm. She didn't tell you like, to stop some of these things? She does, she does, especially with the recent one. Mm. Actually, we've taken somebody to court. Mm. Oh, and I'm not going. I'm, and I'm not going to go back well, on this one. What, what, did, what did the person say? Whether you it was very. Court? It was very. I think he went below. He went below the belt, but mm. to the wrong person. I'm not going to mention who it is. And plus, your wife is a lawyer, so. Um, she is, but I'm not doing it based on her. She's very professional in her work. She makes me make my own decisions. Mm. She lets me make my own decisions. She's so is she the one handling the case? No, she can't handle my case. I've got separate lawyers away from her. Not even from the same law firm? Nope. Nope. Uh. I actually use uh, lawyers from... Uh, <laughs> let me not mention. <laughs> yeah, so I don't use the same lawyers from where she works from. But you know, now, now that um, you, you, were, you, were, you were quite close with... Uh, with, with you had a relationship with Muzukanji. Now you've got a relationship with Kidist. Mm. How does that even work for you? Because now it seems like you've, you've picked a side and um, I people haven't, see sides. I haven't picked a side. Um, I think this is something that I really want to avoid talking about. But um, look, I'm a businessman. Okay? Uh, other than Zach's corner, uh, 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 I don't know how I can say it. Other than Zach's corner, the other things that I do. And I called, uh, I needed somebody to do an appearance at one of my arrangements. And Kidist wasn't available. So I asked, I asked, um, I asked Kidist and Maps if it was okay, I can get Mwizu. They were very fine with it. They gave me a go ahead. And I went on and did it. And then um, after that, I think. A I few think you weeks mentioned that after I did the interview with Magnet, I think you, you mentioned something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, something yeah. that is in the public domain. Yeah. So please eat, eat, eat. Yeah, eat, yeah of eat. course, of course, of course. So, 
after um, after that, uh, I mean, I've known Kiddies for the longest time. We've been we went to the same church and whatnot, so we we had to do some some stuff together, mm. and some pictures were posted on social media. And I think Muizu um, received some some of the screenshots where her fans were telling her now now he's with these people, he's what. So I feel her blocking me at that point was more influenced by her followers than herself. I didn't mm. think she didn't mind, you know what I mean? But mm. uh, I think our relationship with Mizukanji was more of business and how we can do certain things, you know, like uh, alliances where, you know, I was giving out the pads, I gave Mizukanji yeah, to be able yeah. to give out to um, her, her people during uh, her birthday and, and whatnot. So um, I wouldn't say I was close. I wouldn't say I was close. Uh, it's just that maybe social media wants to take things if you are seen with somebody, meaning you are very close. No, it's, it's that's 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 not the thing. But do you, do you ever do you ever do you, do you ever like miss hanging out with her? You know, mm. and the work you used to do because they're very passionate about similar things. She's into also you know the, the philanthropy, helping out. She's got similar interests. You know. And I don't know how to answer that question. Mm. And there's a lot you guys can do together, I know. Yes, th there is a lot. There, there is a lot we can do together. And um, I, really, I, I mean, I don't mind. I don't think Maps and Kiddies mind if I'm chilling with her or, you know, uh, doing certain stuff with her. I, I think it's, it's more of her personal decision that she doesn't want to, to relate with me. Mm. Yeah. Because now, if, even with you, Medlin, like you've said, uh, people have made all these pictures. You put your head on a woman's body, and, and all these things, because uh, people feel out now you're you're meddling into women's business, you know. And mm -hmm. people have been asking themselves, you know, questions. As a man, why do you want to be behaving like a woman? How 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 is that also messing with your 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 mental state? Because I'm sure during this period, you received a lot of negative comments and, and negative attention. How are you dealing with that? Uh, I have received a lot of negative comments, um, a lot of tension and whatnot. Um, but I think it's not a topic that we should discuss. I think I told you earlier on, even before the interview, <laughs> something I don't want to talk about. It's the elephant in the room. Outside room here. It's because, I, I mean, there, there was also the whole, the whole... I mean, it stemmed from your, your post about... About uh, let's, let's actually make reference to post. You wrote Wemun Chimeka, too. You Chimeka, have hundred baby daddies. Chimeka, Chimeka, Chimeka. One of I them have, doesn't post per birthday. Have, but I have had enough. I have had enough of drama relating to this, and I would really appreciate if we don't discuss this. And I feel, but 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 you're the one who you're the one who wrote that. You have outlived your relevance at my premises. I appreciate you coming, but uh, I'm not gonna discuss this. It's not my. But you're the one who wrote this. I don't domain. want to talk about this situation. I don't want to talk about it. What, what, are, what are you running away from? I'm not running away from anything. I just want to live a quiet life and not be involved in some of this drama. It's above me. It's below me, actually. It's below me. So why, do you, why would you write that if you do want to be I involved have, in drama? I have, I, have, I have wasted at least 40 minutes of my time accommodating you, talking about this thing, uh, talking about various other issues. But this is not something I'm going to sit and talk about with you, Chimweka. It's... It's not something I want to discuss. It's below me. It's below me. Then you shouldn't have. I think you, want, you also want to reduce yourself. You also want to reduce yourself to a level of the people who are putting me in a dress and whatnot. No, Bro, no. Let's fight. Let's fight issues relating. You bring a bank statement. I bring a bank statement. <laughs> That's a fight we should be fighting. Not half of those people can't even bring anything to the table. So you know you'd have avoided this. Thank you so much. You'd have avoided this by not posting that. Well. And even going ahead well, to apologize. Well, 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 it's done. But I'm not ready to talk about this. Okay, fine. Let's let's end this interview. Let's yeah. let's let's. Thank you for coming. Uh, we we're out back again next week Sunday. Bye bye.